There are two things about RGB that really irritates me. And if an RGB implementation has either of these problems, it's pretty much a deal breaker. Now the first example I'm going to use for my issue with RGB is a Riven cooler I did a review on recently and it's pretty much a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo with an RGB fan on it. Now the problem with the implementation on this is that the RGB fan is one of the main selling points of this cooler, although it has two connectors. So you've got the normal 4-pin PWM connector and then you've got another 4-pin RGB connector. Now this isn't too much of an issue, but it does mean that it's an extra cable that you have to route and then because of where RGB headers usually are on motherboards, you're, it's not going to reach. So then you have to get an extension cord to get it to go around back and that's just a bit of a pain. And then when I did finally get it to reach the actual RGB header, for some reason, Gigabyte uses a different header than everyone else. They use a five pin RGB header. So it meant that I couldn't use the RGB on it because of some weird implementation that Gigabyte has. And that brings me to my second example of a difficult to use RGB implementation. Now, this is a three pack of Corsair HD120 fans. Now these fans are pretty good. And on the actual box here, it tells you that it's an RGB LED series of fans, that it's got you know 12 independent RGB LEDs per fan, and it's got seven unique lighting effects, and an easy access RGB controller, and PWM fan control. And then on the back, it gives you more examples of how the RGB implementation works. Now, nowhere on this box does it say explicitly that you do have RGB uh, implementation through USB, but it doesn't say that you don't either. And then when you open up the box, you're met with this little accessory pouch, which comes with, with all of this stuff, right? Now this is an actual, this is like the RGB fan controller thing, right? So this doesn't actually control the fan speeds. This is purely to plug this RGB header into. And I'll get to this connector in a bit, but you have this whole thing that you need to put in somewhere. And then you have this little remote which is the only way you have to control the RGB. So you have to lead this out of your case somehow, and then you're able to play with it. There isn't a way to plug this into your motherboard, which is really irritating because for you to be able to plug these fans into your motherboard and use software control, you have to spend an extra $60 to buy an iCommander. And just look at that. You have the normal PWM fan connector, and then you have this thing hanging off of it as well. And honestly, this connector is an absolute nightmare because when you plug it in, it works quite well, right? It kind of sits into the thing quite easily, but then to unplug it, it, it just, you, it's really difficult to get out. The only way that I figured out is you have to stick something in there and push it down. And then it still doesn't, it's, like, honestly, it's a huge pain to get out. And then the problem becomes even worse because this whole connector has an extra SATA power that you need to be able to power the RGB, which is really irritating if you're using a modular power supply and only have M.2 SSDs in your PC, because then you have to add a whole extra modular cable to your power supply just to power this irritating little interface. And while talking about these fans, it brings me to my second caveat, which is cost. Now, if you look at this three pack on Newegg at the moment, it costs you about $78. Now this is a sale cost and you can usually get it for $90, but I'm gonna take the sale cost just to give a benefit of the doubt to the RGB implementation. Now, if you want to buy a single fan, it's $30. Now, if you look at its closest competitor or just a competitor, the Be Quiet Silent Wing 3s go for about $20 a fan for a version that has a similar airflow performance to these at 55 CFMs for the Silent Wing 3s and 54.4 CFMs for these fans. But the Silent Wing 3s perform a lot better when it comes to noise levels. So the Silent Wing 3s run at 16 decibels as opposed to 30 decibels on these HD120s. That's a huge difference in noise. And then when you're looking at $20 a fan as opposed to $30 a fan, if you're buying three fans, you're saving $12 going for the non-RGB option, which is technically a better fan without RGB. 
And then the issue gets kind of worse because you buy these fans thinking that you can kind of plug them into an RGB header on your motherboard, but you can't. You have to spend an extra $60 to get that functionality. So that means you have $12 more for the actual fans with another $60 to unlock the full RGB implementation. That's, that's honestly extra price that RGB just isn't worth. Now there are a lot more examples of the extra cost of RGB, but there is actually another thing that really irritates me about the industry around RGB accessories, and that's cross compatibility. Now, going back to this really irritating plug connector that I still haven't been able to get out, this is a proprietary connector, which means that let's say you buy an NZXT H500i, which comes with a lighting strip. And because it's an NZXT product with NZXT RGB in it, you decide to go and buy an NZXT Hue Plus because you want extra functionality. And then one day you decide to add RGB fans, but you don't want to use NZXT's RGB fans because you really like the build quality and the performance of these Corsair fans. Well, you're kind of out of luck there because this connector doesn't work with the Hue Plus. So you can't use Corsair RGB fans with an otherwise NZXT system. And the same goes the other way around. So all of these companies have their kind of own RGB ecosystems, which makes it more difficult to choose products. And honestly, if you're a beginner, you're already having to worry about what, what CPU works with what motherboard, what graphics card you should get. Then you have to worry about what RGB thing has what connection. <laughs> and with that, it brings me to the end of my ridiculous rant in this video. Let me know in the comment section below what experience you've had with various RGB implementations. And if you agree with all of the stuff that I say in this video, share it with your friends if you think they'll agree. And yeah, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. I've got an Instagram and a Twitter account. Go check out those. And with all of the plugging out of the way, thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, bye-bye.